Good morning. Very warm welcome um, on this second Sunday of Lent, so we continue that Lenten journey together. Um, it feels somehow more seasonal um, this morning. I must admit, I think I prefer the the cold and the bright to the warm and the wet. <laughs> but having said that, it was a shock to get up this morning and have to clear ice off my windscreen um, for eight o'clock. It's warming up a little bit now, um, and a very warm welcome here this morning. Well, let's join together in the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. So we're going to stand now for our opening hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? good to use the commandments. Um, something, of course, we normally have the summary of the law, um, Jesus' summary of the law through our services. But in this Lenten time, as I say, to, to think about the Ten Commandments, which of course are so foundational for us. And in this particular rendition of them, we have both um, the simple commandment and then some verses from the New Testament that in a way recast those, remembering that Christ came to fulfil the law and the prophets. Um, I'm going to read the old, and Chris is going to read the new. So hear these commandments which God has given to his people, and examine your hearts. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not dishonour the name of the Lord your God. You shall worship him with awe and reverence. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Christ is risen from the dead. Set your mind on the things that are above, 
not on things that are on the earth. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honour your father and mother. Live as servants of God. Let us work for the good of all, especially members of the household of faith. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Live peaceably with all. Overcome evil with good. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Be honest in all that you do and care for those in need. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Let everyone speak the truth. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything which belongs to your neighbour. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Love your neighbour as yourself. For love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so just a moment, a pause as we reflect on those commandments we've heard. As we think about those times that we've failed to live in the spirit of those commandments. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So we turn now to our scriptures for today and in introducing those, the words of our collect, our prayer for this day. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And invite Caroline now to come and to, to read our first two readings. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations, 
and kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Abraham believed in the presence of God, who gives life to the dead, and who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness, now the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Well, I hear now, before we hear our gospel um, echoes a line from that gospel, take up thy cross, the Saviour said, if thou wouldst my disciple be. We stand as we're able. <laughs> Yeah. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you're setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. I reflected in a sermon a few weeks back on the birth of our son Matthew, now 16. On the wonder of it, and those who've been at her birth will know that it's a, a wonderful thing, the terror of it, and the profound effect that it had on me. How, having held a newborn child, my child, in my arms, I suddenly found myself seeing the child in everyone, especially when administering Holy Communion, providing me a glimpse, an insight however small, into how God looks on all of us, his children, how truly loved we are. I wonder how many of us have been there at the birth of a child, and how many of us have been at the side of someone we dearly love as they've died. In Celtic spirituality, both are described as thin places, where the veil that separates us from the divine almost disappears, where the divine is virtually within touching distance. Such moments are likely to change us. And so I also wonder this morning how you regard life, this life, what words you might use to describe it. People often remark how fragile life is. That is true. And yet there's the paradox that also it can seem so tenacious. I imagine most of us would see life as incredibly precious. As Christians, I guess all of us would recognise that it is sacred. Something surely worth fighting for, worth protecting above all else. Which brings us to a key verse from our Gospel. What will it profit us to gain the whole world and forfeit our life? But those words aren't quite what they seem. Far from saying we should preserve our life at all costs, Jesus is actually saying that there's something even more important. Indeed, when he talks of forfeiting life, he's not speaking about our mortality or physical death. Rather, he's talking about the cost of turning our backs on God. And the life that becomes forfeit, if we're foolish enough to do that, is our eternal life. It's this knowledge that strengthens his own resolve, that builds up his courage to embrace the path that will ultimately lead to the cross. Having recognised that remaining faithful to God will require him to, be su to suffer and to be killed. 
for that's what it means to be son of man. And is why Jesus responds so emphatically to Peter, sensing the danger in Peter's protestations, the very real temptation he still faces to turn away from that difficult path. In saying, get behind me, Satan, Jesus isn't insulting Peter. Rather, he's asserting who it is that's put these words on Peter's lips. And by naming Satan, the author of all evil and temptation, Jesus prevails, at least in that moment. As if all that wasn't challenging enough, Jesus then says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to, to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it bringing us face to face with the most difficult question. Are we prepared to truly follow in Christ's footsteps, to sacrifice everything for Jesus' sake, for the sake of his gospel? And that puts me in mind of two things. Some words of Alexei Navalny, shown me by Andrew Williams, our parish warden, and also with the prayer of St. Ignatius, set for this season of Lent at morning prayer. Dearest Lord, teach me to be generous, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing I am doing your will. The words of Navalny's come from his closing statement during his trial in 2021, having chosen to return to Russia despite his recent poisoning and the very obvious risks of doing so. He says, if you want, I'll talk to you about God and salvation. I'll turn up the volume of heartbreak to the maximum, so to speak. The fact is I am a Christian which usually rather sets me up as an example for constant ridicule in the Anti-Corruption Foundation because most of our people are atheists and I was once quite a militant atheist myself. But now I'm a believer and that helps me a lot in my activities because everything becomes much, much easier. I think about things less. There are fewer dilemmas in my life because there is a book in which in general it's more or less clearly written what actions to take in every situation. It's not always easy to follow this book, of course, but I am trying actually to do so. And so, as I say, it's easier for me probably than for many others to engage in politics. Navalny went on to quote the Bible, specifically the Beatitude, and this one. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. I've always thought that this particular commandment is more or less an instruction to activity, Navalny continued. And so while certainly not really enjoying the place where I am, I have no regrets about coming back or about what I'm doing. It's fine because I did the right thing. On the contrary, I feel a real kind of satisfaction because at some difficult moment, I did as required by the instructions and did not betray the commandment. It's humbling to be reminded that there are those who choose to live and die by God's truth, who understand that justice, mercy and love are more precious than life itself, that our integrity our faith and trust in God is supremely important, modelling for us a courage that's truly inspirational, and that in this case evidently inspires Alexei's widow, Yulia, and of course his mother, Ludmilla. Fact is, Navalny didn't have to return to Russia following the first attempt on his life. I doubt anyone would have thought any less of him if it stayed in Germany that he saw things differently. And may we pray that his sacrifice 
was not in vain. The other person that we're offered in our readings today, a life to inspire us, is that of Abraham. What sets him apart is not so much courage as faith. So Paul puts it this way in Romans chapter 4. No distrust made Abraham waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. What made Abraham's faith so remarkable was his great age, along with his wife Sarah's age. Such that God's promise to make of them a great nation seemed impossible, even ridiculous. It would have been understandable if Abraham had turned his back on God's promise long before, but instead he chose to trust. Paul's clear that what matters is not our inheritance, not our wealth or power or status, nor even our ability to religiously keep all the rules. Now, in the end, the question is whether we choose to trust God. For it's this trust which draws us into a close living relationship with God, in which, like Abraham, we could be described as God's friend. To speak very personally, and to go back to where I started with the birth of our son, I must say I'm immensely proud of both of our children, Matthew and Emma of all the things they've already achieved and are achieving. Just yesterday I called my mum for a catch-up and relayed some of that pride in what they've recently been up to. To which she replied that what matters more is that they're great kids, that they're a joy to be with, and that they care about others. She's of course right. And more than anything, I'm proud of the people they're becoming. And I'm delighted that faith is already a key part of their lives, shaping their character and values. Looking at the state of the world in which they're growing up, in which all of us live, is a little frightening sometimes. I wonder what their future will hold. And I'd be lying if I didn't admit to worrying sometimes about what heartbreak there could be along the way as well as joys and blessings, I trust. And in saying that, I'm conscious of just how privileged they and most of us are. How in so many situations and places, life is a great deal harder, more precarious, more vulnerable. Whatever situations we might be facing now, whatever future challenges there may be, we can know that the best way, the only true way, is to trust the one who looks on each of us, his children, with love, who gave himself for us, who holds everything in his hands, even our very lives. Accepting Jesus' is called to follow him without counting the cost, without heeding the wounds, in the sure knowledge that our life is secure in God. And so finally, let us pray that the Holy Spirit would so inspire and guide us, conscious of the many temptations to turn aside, and that in our own strength we can do nothing. Let's stand as we declare our faith. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high, and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. 
Amen. Invite us to sit or, or to sit um, as we come to our prayers of intercession. Be a brave person to kneel here. <laughs> As we continue our journey through Lent, help us to use the time given to us to draw closer to you and to understand and celebrate more fully all you have done for us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for the Lent study course and the groups meeting together to encourage and support each other. May we learn more about the fullness of life you offer and be better equipped to share this good news with others. Guide us as we think of who to invite to our church coffee mornings and the Alpha Taster evening in early March. Bless Nick and Simon, Sue, Roger and Suzette, and all who work hard to lead and support our churches in this parish. May we, together with the whole church worldwide, be faithful in our witness, and reflect your love in action in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the young families attending Sunday Club here at St. Helens, and for Linda Hicks who <coughs> leads them. And we remember too the families who came to Messy Church on Friday. May they all grow up knowing of your love for them and feel part of this church family. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As we see the first signs of spring emerge again, we thank you, Father, for the beautiful world you created. Please forgive past mistakes that have resulted in changes in climate patterns now adversely affecting so many parts of the world. Strengthen the resolve of world governments to make right decisions to safeguard the planet for the coming generations. We pray for our government and as as time for the next general election draws closer, ask that those who seek public office will be people of integrity, intent on serving the whole of society. Locally, we pray for councils facing financial challenges, and particularly for workers who've lost their jobs because of cutbacks. May we be generous in giving practical help to families in real need through our donations to the food bank in church. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace in our world and an end to the devastating suffering war is causing in Ukraine and Gaza and countless other areas of conflict. We pray for all who've lost family, homes and livelihoods, and are now struggling to survive in appalling conditions. Loving Father, where all seems hopeless, renew their hope and grant them the courage and strength to face the future 
and work together for a just and lasting peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering mental, physical or spiritual pain. For the lonely, the vulnerable, <coughs> and all who are feeling fearful about the future. Show us the best way to offer appropriate help without being intrusive or insensitive. We continue to pray for all who are named on our call to prayer list, each one known to you and precious. Strengthen King Charles as he copes with his treatment for cancer and also the Princess of Wales as she recovers from her operation. And we pray for Susan Gong and Sue Chandler, who are both unwell at this time. Lord Jesus, you came to our world to help, to heal, and to save. May all who are suffering Sense the comfort of your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Thank you, Father, that your love reaches beyond the grave. May this truth comfort all who mourn. And we pray for the family and friends of Alexei Navalny who died in such tragic circumstances, and for all victims of war and those who grieve for them. And we remember with thanksgiving all those we have loved who have died and are now with you, trusting in your unfailing love, merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand as we record. Christ is our peace. He's reconciled us to God in one body on the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Uh, share with those around us a sign of God's peace. <laughs>
mercy and compassion your word calls us home to faith and love accept all we offer you this day we ask this in the name of jesus christ our lord amen Amen. the lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god It it is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying... Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. Christ Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Be seated. So trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory of our God, now and forever. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, God of our pilgrimage, you fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh us and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I don't know how many witnessed it, but there was a lovely moment as the children were coming in and they all came straight to Chris, who clearly has a magnetism that I do not. <laughs> Chris, do you want to come and give yeah. our, our notices? Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Lots of pieces of paper here, so bear with me a second as we'll, we go through a few of those. Thank you very much indeed for coming to us this morning, and uh, thank you, Jeff, too, for playing for all those involved in our service this morning. Thank you so much. It's the World Day of Prayer on Friday the 1st of March. It's being held at uh, Sunny Hole URC. It's a drop-in type of thing with lots of displays and places where we can pray privately. And that's between 10, 10 a.m. and 2.30. That's on Friday the 1st of March. Do to uh, go along to that if you possibly can. Quite a lot of our, our press supporters have sent, sent through some news about what they're doing and uh, some really good stuff going on. Max, who if you remember is Malawi Association for Christian Support, they've sent their newsletter and they're doing an amazing work helping the people in Malawi. There are some of these at the back of a church. Do take one or have a look at one or ask for a copy and we'll send you one. We get in there. Festive is also another one of the charities that we support, working with young people in sixth form colleges and colleges of further education. They've also sent their year in review. So do have, have a look at that too, that's very interesting. He says, slightly biased point of view. Um, 
There are also these little booklets called Watch and Pray, which are uh, readings through Easter. They're a little bit late coming to us, but they look excellent. If you would like one of those, there are some at the back there. Um, I think we're asking a, a contribution of £2.50. But uh, I can get some more of those if, you, if they've run out. But if you'd like to have a look at those, and if you'd like to take one away with you, please, please do. There's also a very good thing on Bible Society too, which we'll, we'll lead out there at some stage, sorry. Um, one thing that's coming up is our Alpha Taster evening. We've got an, uh, an Alpha course coming up. Um, oh, thank you. Coming up very, very shortly. And, and actually we're doing a Taster evening here on the 6th of March. So it's going to be a, some food, uh, and there's going to be some um, a little bit of video clips, and a chance to ask some questions. Do come along to that. It's for people who are exploring faith, but it's also for people who, who want to renew their faith, to, have, to get to refresh it, if you like. So do come along to that. There's no commitment to go on to the course by coming to the taster evening, but we do know numbers, need to know numbers. So there, there are these leaflets outside, and it gives the booking reference on there. Do think about joining that. It should be a very good course. It's a, a, a very, very renowned course, the Alpha course, and it's... Uh, it's very good at answering some of those questions that we all we are all asking about. Why are we here? And what, what's what's life all about? I've got a couple of messages here. Luke is six years old today. Yay! And, and Heather, yay. So Heather Hughes is a few more years than that, but it's also her birthday today. So Heather and Luke, can we can we just uh, Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear heaven, happy birthday to you. Before I ask, um, the children will come and hopefully I think share a little bit of what they've been up to this morning. I've seen them carrying in some quite exciting looking things. Um, just to echo a little bit of what, what Chris said, that yes, the, um, the Alpha Taster really do encourage us for that. Um, and I don't know about you, but if you're inviting people to join something like a course, it's really good to know what you're inviting them to. Um, Alpha really works on that principle that we would invite friends, family, others that we know. Um, it's more likely that people will come to Alpha because of that than seeing a banner, however beautiful it might be, um, in front of the church. Um, and I, as I say, really appreciate that before you have the confidence to invite somebody to something, um, it's really good to know what that is. So that, that's the, the opportunity to come along to the taster evening um, and to see and enjoy the food and the fellowship as well. Um, what I think of food and fellowship, and this is a way off, but I just want to just plant a seed, which is that we are here... Um, in Holy Week on Monday, Thursday, holding what's known as an agape meal. Uh, not probably familiar to many people. So um, agape is one of the words for love that we have in the New Testament. And an agape meal or love feast is really a chance for us to think about sharing bread and wine. It's not Holy Communion on that occasion. We're simply sharing bread and wine and a meal in the context of a meal, remembering that, of course, when Jesus... On that first Monday, Thursday, when he instituted the, the Lord's Supper, um, you know, it was in the context of a celebration, a meal, together with his friends. And so it's a, it's a lovely kind of informal occasion to really go back to those roots um, and a great chance, again, to invite others to come along. Um, it's not really a service. I wouldn't describe it as a service. It's a certainly a reflection on that really important night of Monday, Thursday. But above all, it's a fellowship meal. So a great chance to, to come along to invite others for a really lovely evening. So planted that seed. We'll keep nagging you on that as well, with other things. Um, let's now invite, as I say, our youngsters and uh, any others who would like to come and tell us what they've been up to. So this morning, we've been... Um, hearing the story of the big picnic called Jesus Feeds a Crowd. Um, and we were hearing about picnics that children have been on. Some have had indoor picnics and some are going to South Africa for a picnic over Easter, which sounds very exciting. Um, 
And we heard the story about a little boy who showed an act of kindness by sharing his very small lunch. And that just went such a long way and fed so many people. So we've been thinking about one act of kindness can go a very long way and how we need to concentrate on that. And the children and the grown-ups, the grown-ups have been very busy today, <laughs> have made these wonderful mobiles that have got, probably have got five loaves and two fish. And they say 5,000 and they say thank you God. So that's what we've been doing. South Africa is a very long way to go for a picnic. <laughs> it must be a very special one. Well, let's stand now for our closing hymn at the name of Jesus. Him always brings a smile to my face. It's a favourite, um, right from when I was about the age of these ones over there. Um, I wanted an angel train to go along with Thomas and Percy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Will Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him? And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.